Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day four of the talks for the Plone Conference. Um, your moderator for today, Chrissy Wainwright. Uh, today, I am introducing Rafael Nunez. Uh, he is a longtime Zope and Plone developer. He's been around the community since 2002, uh, so quite a bit longer than me. Uh, works for the City University of New York, um, has done lots of things with Plone and different add ons. Um, and today he is going to talk about uh, institutional assessment with Plone. So, Raphael, you can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I'll share my screen. Okay, so institutional assessment with Plone. And I will explain the jam later. <laughs> okay, so Chris already introduced me. Uh, we run the ARC website, which is powered by Plone. We run a whole bunch of different systems within the college, uh, like the parking permit system, um, faculty reappointment, they're all running on Plum. So in 2019, uh, the college went for free accreditation and we were giving a warning. Um, uh, the warning was to improve our internal system of documenting assessment results, actions plan, and follow up strategies. This was by the Middle State Commission on Higher Education. Uh, and we had a deadline of March, 2020. Um, uh, the reason why this was happening is because um, there was no institutional assessment, uh, there was no tool uh, college-wide for institutional assessment. Units were uh, using Excel, Google Docs, Blackboard, um, or whatever um, tool they wanted to use at the time to collect and gather the information and fill out the documentation. Um, department shares will change over time um, within the accreditation period. So sometimes uh, things may get lost in the process um, when they're not passed properly from one year to the, to the following. Uh, and the plans, uh, even though they were available online, they were being distributed as PDF documents. So we had a, a, a web page which have all the different um, units, um, um, as, uh, documents, plans and reports. But there was no way to to correlate the data if you wanted to look at uh, one particular part of the of the plan that correlates to different units you couldn't do that because there's a whole bunch of documents all over the place um so uh, so we have eight months to from concept to having a full data full year of data um um to go to in this system uh, eight months we have to develop the the product which didn't exist uh, in our institution uh, as well as getting all the units there were about 108 different units um, there's 49 academics 53 administrative units um, and finances were an issue at york uh, yeah we broke uh, we were broke at the time uh, due to contracts, uh, uh, the city of New York um, delayed for years, and then they have to like retroactively pay um, a whole bunch of salaries to everybody. Um, oh, and my own, my team is way under uh, staff. Um, so, so the the new director of um, institutional assessment. Uh, call the meeting uh, and ask if uh, if we can build it. Uh, she didn't consider uh, getting a, another system because she has experience with several uh, in the past, uh, different institutions before she came to York. And uh, they were very expensive for our budget and they didn't meet the, the need. Uh, so they asked us, can we build it? And we say, yes, we can, or yes, Plon can. Uh, so we got the requirements. Um, um, during the meeting, we got the requirements. The visitors um, should be able to look at the unit's missions and goal. Um, the coordinator will be able to create the, the, the updated missions and goals, uh, as well as add plans, mid-year check and reports, or end of year report. Um, then they will submit it to the director, which will review the information. Um, and it will then be submitted to the VP for approval. Uh, they will look at the information. 
make any corrections uh, and approve it. And then it will go to the um, to the committee. Um, so there's a committee in the college, one for academic um, and one for non-academic units. Um, and they will review the, the plans, uh, mid-year checks and reports submitted. Um, and they can they will uh, make comments on it as well. And they will approve or um, reject. So those were the basic requirements. Uh, so we created a plan. Um, this was, I mean, we met during the summer, so I had to take time off because um, it's either use it or lose it um, since I'm over my cabin in, in annual leave. So, but by September 1st, um, we need to go live with the missions and goals. Um, phase two was gonna be September 15, where we're gonna have the non-academic unit plans um by the end of the month we're going to have the academic unit plans um ready to go to to start populating um phase four was the mid-year check phase five was was the assessment reports and this is now in january uh, and the reason why this, there's, there's this gap is one because my team is on the staff and we have work to do in addition of creating this but also all the units have to populate all this information. They need to gather data uh, as well as creating the reports, um, mid-year checks and plans. Um, and they have a due date when they have to do this, this task. So we will, our phase was um, about 15 days before they have to uh, uh, start uploading and submitting the information. That will give the, the units enough time for to get trained on how to use the tool how to use how to upload your plans or mid years or reports and be able to start uploading and submitting the information. And the last step uh, is the institutional uh, uh, assessment um, department's uh, report, but they, they can see the big picture. Um, and I will get to that in a second. So, hammer time. Uh, it's time to start working on the tool uh, on the system. Uh, so we already have Plon. Uh, we are using Plon. Everything that we develop within my team is usually Plon, not necessarily Plon. Uh, there's a tool for everything, uh, but Plon fit, fit mo most of the stuff that we do. Uh, we're using the distribution of Plon Castle. Um, for uh, We went with Castle for our main website um, because of it, it had a lot of the things that we were going to do um, we were, it, it, it was the way we wanted to build Plon at the time we migrated in 2017. Um, so instead of having to create all these different components, Castle had the distribution, everything I, I have envisioned for the Plon side at the time. Um, Plon has content rules. Um, so um, that's something that we use for notifications. Every time there's a transition, a notification will go out to the respective party. Uh, we needed to add the mail to role add-on uh, for Plon um, because the default rules um, you only have like reviewer, reader, and a, and a couple of other um, roles that you can send to. With the mail to role, it allowed me to add to add new roles to the Plon side and being able to send notifications to those specific roles. Um, LDAP authentication we use um, AD in our uh, in the university, so our website is connected to that. All our faculty, staff, and students can log into the to the content management system using their AD credentials. Working copy and iterate um, uh, is very important to me because uh, we want to keep track of the changes over time. And, and pretty much, you can blame if something goes wrong. You know who to blame. Um, workflow, workflow policy support. Um, our site is not only a public facing site for uh, informing students, but it also has a lot of um, sections that are intranet. Um, so we use a workflow policy to set different policy in the, those areas. So if you were to log into a section of the website, uh, that will be an intranet site. Um, also, um, all our faculty, staff, and students are already, um, they, they already have access to the CMS, and a lot of the units are using it to update their own content, their websites. Um, faculty, 
are using it for reappointment. We have another system, which is the personnel and budget system running on the side, which is uh, how the faculty gets reappointed. Uh, and that's probably another talk after I upgrade to uh, dexterity uh, or Volto. So in phase one, we created a units content type, which is a container and goals. Um, we created new roles, uh, one for coordinator, department head, and VP. And the, the new roles, I, in the past, uh, have been using Plum for a while. So in the past, I will just go to the CMI, add the new role, and, uh, and you know, we'll have my role there through the CMI. Uh, this time, I created, since I was creating that on, um, I, was, um, I also created the roles to there because I want to have the option uh, from the sharing uh, in Plum to be able to select those uh, roles uh, when given permission. Um, this is restricted to uh, site administrators, so only site administrator can assign those roles. Uh, and then we created the workflow. Uh, for the workflow, we created it through the web and then export it and put it into the product. We also created a view um, that will allow us to display the information the way they want. They have a specific vision of what the, what the system should look like, how the documents should be presented. So we created a, a, a view for that. Also this view uh, will filter, so the missions and goals, uh, when the document is published are, are, view, are, are publicly available, um, but there's other portions of that template that are, are not displayed to the public. Okay, so our initial deployment, we have phase one ready, we have the, all the content created, and it's now time to deploy it. Um, we plan a maintenance window. Um, the website will not go down. Uh, we can keep the site running, but it will go into read-only mode because we have to run build out on our master um, server. Um, so we have to uh, uh, announce it. So we announce it to the community. The website will be in read-only mode for like an hour. Um, and then before that, we have, um, I usually create a content on my machine locally, uh, tested in the latest version of Plon. Um, currently I'm running six of my box, so I make sure that the product is, is up to date and working on all the versions. Um, we deploy to our test, our development machine. We upload it to our GitHub, our GitLab, um, and then we will upload, uh, test it on our, our uh, clone of our production machine our development or castle development. Um, just to make sure, because since I'm testing on the, I'm running the code in the latest version of my machine, but the plum size running castle, which is a different version, just want to make sure that everything is, is, is doesn't doesn't break anything uh, when you move it to castle. Um, in some cases, I noticed like there's some, because of the different versions. So um, there's some things I have to change uh, to make sure that there is working. So we test that um, at least a week before the go live date. Um, the day before the go live, what we do, everything is tested. Um, we first uh, upgrade our one of our mirrors image of the master. Um, make sure that one will come back up when after running build out. Uh, in non new modes, was just to make sure that nothing else breaks. Um, and if that goes uh, according to plan, then I will upgrade mirrors two and one. So the day before the, the scheduled maintenance, um, my mirrors are ready uh, with a production code. Uh, all I have to do is uh, bring down the master from build out and restart the clients. So, and that's exactly what we do. Um, after the initial um, build out, initial deployment of the add-on, we no longer need to run build out again. And we do this um, by um, just doing a, a git pull on the different servers. Again, I will usually start with a mirror. If I can break a mirror, I have two other ones um, that can handle the, the information. Uh, so we will start by, um, doing a git pull, get the latest data, test it on the on one of the mirrors, make sure that doesn't break, 
uh, once uh, that has been successfully uh, run, they will run it on my other mirrors. And then I will do a git pull on my master and sequentially restart the class sub clients. So that website will ne never goes down, never goes into read only um, this way. So, and we're gonna need this because on every phase of this project, we're gonna be uploading, updating the code and, and, and deploying it. Sometimes uh, I will need to uh, reinstall the product uh, on Plum. Um, I was doing this with a um, portal quick installer, uh, which is going away or it's, it's gone by now in Plum 6. Um, otherwise I will have to go into the uninstall it and then re reinstall it which is pretty much the same thing that um, the portal uh, quick installer reinstall will do. Okay, so I guess it's demo time. Okay, so basically I am running this on my local machine here. Um, the units are very simple. We have a vocabulary for the different units. So I'm just gonna pick information technology. And then we have the division. Uh, this is part of administrative affairs. And then I will put the mission. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw in some mission here. So that creates my my unit. Uh, like I said again, we had 108 units at the beginning, which got cut down um, last year because there were too many administrative units. So they were got, got condensed uh, administratively. Um, so we we have the the mission and goal uh, for this this uh, unit, and now we can have the goals. Um, when we had this ready and deployed to the server, um, since we already had the missions and goals on the website, um, we started copying that information over. Uh, so we had a, a part-time worker just go through all the different units, um, create all of them, uh, copy and paste all the missions and goals. So I'm just gonna add a new goal. Uh, again, uh, I'm just gonna make something up here. This is my first goal, and then I'm going to add another goal. And you can add as many goals as you want. Um, now, you notice I didn't use the add button on the left menu. Uh, you can still add it through there, um, but the reason why we did it this way is um, to guide the users on what they need to do. Um, in addition, um, we didn't create views for goals. Uh, we want them to see the unit, not the individual goals, but they could if it needed. Um, in addition, that allow us um, to, to present the information uh, in a more comprehensive way for them. Uh, after the mission and goal was populated, um, the units were published. And on their websites, um, instead of having that static uh, missions and goals, um, we switched to a, a Ajax call to pull that information from, um, from, uh, from the Jam system. Now, um, this information up here is publicly available uh, for most units. Uh, right now this is private, so it's not gonna be publicly available, but when it's published, it is publicly available. The table below, which I don't have any information yet, um, that's only visible to those with permission to um, add content or review the content. So in phase two, which was 15 days after the initial deployment, that will give us enough time for um, the units to be populated because we're gonna need that first before anything else. Uh, so we went into phase two. In phase two, we created a pro, uh, the, uh, the unit assessment plan, which is a container. Um, and that container will also add uh, a whole, uh, the content plan activity programs plan rationale and collection evaluation. Uh, we created a new workflow for this content type. 
which is also followed by the by the containing objects, uh, in which it will follow the what I described before. The coordinator can create the, the, the plan, then it will be submitted to the director, and the other director will review it and submit it to the VP, and the VP will then approve it, and it goes to the committee, and the committee will uh, publish or publish either internally or externally. The workflow allows us to publish internal or externally. At the time, this information needed to be externally published because uh, of reaccreditation. It's now most of the content is um, internally published um, and they can switch back and forth as needed. And a new view was created for this uh, program, uh, for this unit assessment, unit plan. Okay, so back to the demo. So I'm just gonna create a new plan. We have a little instruction here, a little post-it note, uh, you can say uh, to let the users know what to do, and then they can add a new plan. For the plan, um, all they have to do is pick the year and who's the unit director. Um, so they pick the year and the unit director. That's all they choose, but not, that's not all the content that is contained by this content type. After you save it, you're gonna see that you have a new year here, and this is organized by year. So we got the year, the plan, the mid-year check, and the report. Um, it will say view uh, when the document is in draft. After it is submitted, it will, uh, it will show the day that it was uh, submitted. Okay, so this is the new plan. So as you can see, all we selected was the year and the, and the, direct, the unit director. And this uh, pre-populated a lot of the information. So we can see we already have the the year, we, call, we create a title based on the information we have in the fields. We got the year, which was selected by the user, the unit, um, actually the unit, uh, which we pick up from the parent. Uh, when we create a plan, um, our um, vocabulary will look at the parent's uh, unit name and will bring that information into the plan. Uh, we do this, so we have every plan, every report has the information about the unit, the division um, in it. Uh, so we have the year, the division, the unit, the director, who created the plan, other contributors, and the date. Uh, the date is currently blank because it's still in private. Once submitted, it will have that date um, there. Now we have also the mission. And the mission um, is currently uh, is taken uh, from the unit mission, so they don't they don't have to type in. Uh, the idea is that uh, the information is consistent, so the less you have people typing the information in, the more uh, consistent it's going to be. And then we go into the assessment plan. Uh, we have a little yellow notes on the things that when they need to do something. Um, and usually we sometimes will do the blue bar um, when they can edit a section um, here. So if I were to add a new outcome, this is a child object within this um, plan container. And as you can see, we have a vocabulary here, um, which will basically looks at the unit. Um, and I have two units with the same information. Uh, it will take the, the unit's goals and that you can choose from. Um, so, the, so the goals are consistent. So if you declare that your goal is this, um, you will be able to select that uh, on the, on the uh, plan. Uh, this is S. So this is my unit outcome is to, uh, let's do something better. In, Um, this uh, it has to align. Um, the expected outcome has to align with the with the strategic initiatives uh, for the college. And this is another vocabulary that we created. Um, 
Um, and we have also the uh, institutional learning outcomes. So they have to select an institutional learning outcome. So it's the one at random. Uh, and what is the activity? Um, so you have to document this. What are the steps that are, are going to uh, be done uh, to get to this out, uh, outcome? Um, launch. Okay, how are we going to make measure success? Um, let's say number of downloads for now. Number of this is side. Number of new business. Okay. You see there's and how are we gonna collect this information? Is this a direct or indirect? And what's our target? Uh, increase. users by 10%. Okay. So when you save it, uh, it will you will still looking at the um, plan content type. Uh, you will see your units uh, outcome here, and um, and the information you put in. Uh, the rationale for the plan again. This is another content that you will be adding to this object. Uh, so when you click on that, then you have a text box here. I'm just gonna do because otherwise we're gonna run out of time, and you can add as many as you need. Uh, that's the one of the reasons why we are, are creating this. This is con this thing also have multiple paragraphs. And again, the data collection. Uh, once they create something, that little label that says you need something here disappears. So now this will go to the review process. So again, they will just transition it like they will, will normally submit to, in this case, because of my role, I can submit to the department head or chair uh, and, or submit to the VP or dean. Um, I'm using the slash here because um, I'm using the same workflow for um, academic and non-academic units. And they call the VP, it's not a VP on the, on the academic size of dean. Uh, the department head is not a department head, it's a chair, um, but they, they pretty much have the same roles. So after this is completed, it will be submitted. Um, and the workflow will change. If we go back to the unit, you can see that the information here changed to the, to the uh, time when it was submitted. So that gets done, Sam. Um, then, um, let's go back to the presentation because we're done with this part. Now we move into phase three. Um, this was done about less than a month after the initial um, um, deployment of the add-on. Uh, and this had the academic side of it. The academic and non-academic are very similar, similar enough that you can copy and paste most of the code, but different enough that you need two different um, to different content types. And they have different fields, different um, requirements and different labeling for the information. Uh, in this case, the academic units, they have a different plan activity because they have different requirements, uh, but the rationale, uh, plan rationale in collections, collection evaluation, those are the same, but it has a different view as well. And I'm not gonna show this because if I do, I won't run, I won't have enough time. Um, but it's very similar to what I showed you before. Then we had the mid-year check. This is very simple. Uh, it's just one content type with some choices and some text area. So we created the content type. 
Um, and we created a, a view for it. I'm just gonna show you real quick. Uh, so when you do add mid year check, as you can see here, we don't, you don't add it from the menu, though you could, but that's not the way we tell them to do it. Um, they add it by clicking here. Then again, basically the year, the unit director, they can choose from the menu, or you can search. There's about 10,000 users that they can search uh, by. So, and basically this is just a, ch a checkbox of uh, whether you're on track to meet your um, your goals or, or your outcomes or not. So I'm just gonna say yes, 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 yes for now. Uh, I'm going to put a comment here. This is a comment. You can comment on any of this. Um, the war optional is there. It was uh, requested by the users because they thought it was, even though it wasn't a required field, they thought it was required. So they, we were asked to add the war optional on the label. Uh, Oops, I didn't select this stuff. Again, we're using all the plum mechanism to create forms of uh, the sterility um, and to validate information. So that's our mid-year, which is very short and very simple and straightforward. Then we go into phase five. Um, this was a little bit more, uh, we have more time, which was good because it, it will require a little bit more of, um, of uh, fields, content types and and also we have to modify the workflow to accommodate this one. We also have a report view, uh, which is a view for this, the parent content type. And we have a generate report. Um, basically, the report is not created manually. You generate a report for the year. When you do that, what it does is that it grabs the out plan outcome from the this year's plan and bring it into the report. Um, in addition of grabbing the, the unit name, the summary, the mission, all that from the parent, uh, but it also looks at the year before. Um, when you generate a report for the 2021 uh, plan, uh, assessment year, um, you're taking information from the 2021 plan and you're taking information from the 2020 uh, report. Um, and I will show you that in a second. Uh, so let's go to that. I'm just gonna generate a report for this year first. Um, in 2019, 2020, um, the report was a table um, because that's the way they were doing it and that's the way they wanted to present the information. And when it is created, you can see that we really brought in my goal from this year. Since we don't have any data on changes implemented, uh, that is blank. But uh, if we create a plan for this year, uh, it will bring the changes implemented from, from the assessment report from the year before. So again, this will give you a little edit option where you can modify the information. Some things are frozen, so they're only for displaying the information, they're stored, but the user cannot modify it at this time because on your plan, you say this is what you were gonna do. But there's a few things that you can do. Um, so it will bring all the information. Now you will see what's the target met or not. Uh, uh, what are the findings in progress and the use of results? Among other things that are here. Um, I'm gonna cancel this because I wanna show you the one with the, the jams. Okay. So I'm gonna create, I created this template before. So I'm just gonna run the report for uh, the 2021, 2022. For, uh, and you can see that you have the blue line for things that are good. Uh, you don't need to add anything else here, um, but also it shows you the, 
uh, orange line until the any completion, it will tell you complete this section. So this section needs to be completed. Uh, it will also bring in the changes implemented. Uh, so these are um, things that we were reported on the 2020-2021 assessment report. Uh, so if you look here, we got our um, uh, outcome one, test, 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 test. <laughs> Uh, in outcome two, test, 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 test as well. So when the report for the 2021-2022 is created, you can see that those are already put in. And now we have a little completed section um, posted now here. So they know that they have to, they have more work to do. So when they do that, um, it will bring in all the information. As you can see here, this unit goal is no longer exists. It's not it but it's not changed uh, since it will be storing the data. They cannot change the unit goal now because that was the goal that was reported last year. Uh, they can add a few information here. So if the change was implemented, they can say that. What's the current status? Um, progress. Uh, and whether there was a budgetary consideration. They're not using this for budget yet, but the plan is that um, the decisions about the budget are gonna be um, highly influenced by your uh, reports. So let's say this is pending approval. So now that section is completed and you can see how it's, it's no longer has a little post-it note in it. Uh, so the user knows that, they, that, that is completed. This uh, goal needs to be completed. So if I complete this section, uh, target was met. I don't know the findings, so progress may. I'm just gonna say progress. Uh, use of results. So we can say that. I'm just gonna do tests because I'm gonna have a lot of time. Start typing stuff here. Uh, tests. Um, uh, budgetary consideration. Uh, yes, request submitted to the department head. Uh, unit communication, yes, I communicated with everybody. Um, method of communication, I send an email and say that. And now my unit account is complete. So now I have a full report that I will submit to my director. They will review it. Uh, wait, I'm missing this part. Um, they will review it, then they will pass it on to the next, um, to the BP for approval. Uh, and so on. Also, um, they can upload attachments here. So if I have an attachment of uh, rubrics, survey, or other, uh, that can be uploaded. And my Chrome is acting up this week, so I cannot even select files anymore. Let's see if I can drop works. Yeah, that can work, work works locally. Uh, so now you can have that attachment there. And again, because this is a, the report's a container, you can add as many attachments as you want. Uh, there's also other accomplishments. So if you if you did something incredible and you want to highlight it on your um, on your report that's relevant, then you can add that information. Again, you can add as many as you want here. Okay, in phase six, then we went into the into the, the institutional reports. And basically this is, um, we created a whole bunch of endpoints um, to connect the data to Power BI. In the past, we have created reports in Plum um, using um, where it will show you nice charts. Um, but because we are, Develop the, the institutional um, research, institutional assessment. Um, they are already using Power BI. It was easier for them to see the information in Power BI, uh, and they can slice and dice the data there. So uh, reports were created for this. So basically, we created a couple of uh, Power BI views for this. We create connected the data to Plum using the CSV format. Uh, so the information gets pulled from Plum to Power BI. 
And now the, the institutional assessment, um, they can say, see, there's 108 units uh, throughout the years. They can select a specific year if they want. So this is the 2021, 2022. Um, um, so the first year we had 102 plans. Uh, in play, uh, submitted. Uh, you can see the distribution of plans, reports. You can say you just want the administrative ones and that will narrow it down. So Power BI, this is something that I probably will make a view in Plon uh, so they can get even more up-to-date information. This has to be refreshed. Um, if I create this in Plon, it will be real-time data that we can just um, just pull in directly and present it. Uh, from here, they can see how many, what's the, st the state of all the submissions. Uh, they can narrow it down to a specific one. Um, they can also see the specific strategic goal. Um, let's say they want to uh, uh, this, see this goal, how many people, how many units are uh, using that. That can be done as well. Um, I just show that. So this uh, this one for an overview, this one for the uh, different units as well. So rules and mosaic. Um, we use rules, as I said before, the standard rules did not meet the need that I had for this product. So we added the add-on um, that allow us to send emails to specific roles. And that's something that I didn't show. So let me just show that real quick uh, with my sharing. Um, the is coordinator, director, is department head, uh, chair, is VP deans are some of the roles that we added with this add-on and they're available through the web. Um, so in order to to be able to notify people with those roles, we have to add the add-on. Um, and that took care of that. We send notifications to the coordinator, we send notifications to the committee, we send notifications to the VP, we send notifications to the to the um to uh if anything is sent back at any point, which can happen, um, the notifications are sent back to the coordinator or creator. Um we are using Mosaic for the layout of JAMS, or JAMS stands for your college assessment management system. I didn't come up with the name. I didn't agree with the name, but they are using the name and the name stuck. Uh, and that's why we have the JAM at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so the view, uh, when they go into JAMS, they can do it through the Logging into the website, they say uh, in the dashboard, there's a link to Jams, or they can just go to yerk.edu slash Jams, and they will get this page, which has some information uh, about training. Um, we have the AAC, which is the Academic Program Assessment, and we have the AESS, which is the Non-Academic Program Assessment, which is Administrative Educational Student Supporting, um, uh, on that view as well, you have the pending review items. Uh, we got a column for the pending unit coordinate, um, unit head, uh, pending BP, pending committee. Uh, and this is all done with um, Mosaic because I, if I have to develop, it will take me more time than just doing it through the web. And it's the same. So reuse, 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 reduce, recycle. <laughs> Um, so in the end, we had, uh, we created 25 uh, dexterity types, content types. Some are folderish, some are not. Uh, we create the 22 views or a script to generate the content. Um, we created 11 vocabularies that are used through the site. A lot of things are querying content. Uh, so like the, the goals, Vocabulary is doing a query for that particular unit um, goals. Um, and the year, uh, for the year, uh, I will talk about that in a second. Uh, we created workflows um, um, that we needed for all this information. We created three new, three new roles that I mentioned before and the Power BI uh, report. 
Um, so uh, miscellaneous, um, I recently updated the year vocabulary to exclude um, items, plants that are already created or mid years that are already created from the list because the faculty, the users, um, they were uh, selecting the same year twice. So that was creating two objects with the same uh, year, but we only show one. So there was, there was like, creating a little bit of confusion there. So we'll just add it, modify that. So it does a query, make sure that if that year exists for that unit, uh, for a plan, don't show that on that plan menu vocabulary of years. Um, table is outcome. Um, the 2019, like I mentioned before, uh, this one has years, okay. No, not that one. This one. So the 2019 report, uh, the information was presented as a table, uh, which is, they were used to like the spreadsheet um, to have that information, but that doesn't work on the web because the web is a lot narrower than the table is. And it doesn't work for printing because you cannot print it. Um, you need a really wide piece of paper. So the 2019 um, looks like it still use the table, though we can change it very easily. Um, there's other fields that changes um, as well. Uh, any year after that, the the view is uh, this um, this uh, structure all content here uh, because it's easier for printing. Um, and it can, it does fit on the screen. Um, we still keep the table here on the changes implemented because those has less columns and that fits on the screen and, and when you print it. Uh, Rafael, we are at time. Okay. I okay. have to cut you off. Um, no, no, I'm okay. good. I, I was long anyway. <laughs> that was my last slide. Uh, okay. Uh, well, thank you for showing us how your organization uses Plone. I think it's it's always interesting to see how other developers solve problems. Um, so everyone watching, if you can join in Jitsi, uh, if you have any questions for Rafael, go ahead and join him there, um, posting the link. And, and thank you, Rafael, for, for speaking today. Thank you.